guys, I had to put the camera down and help Ben um, punch this off. Basically, just converted the shaft against the vise and hit down on it with the pole chisel. The last thing to get off is just this ring here, which is pretty easy, like so. And that leaves your naked shaft. So, <laughs> that was on that note. <laughs> on that note, moving on. So what we've got to do here is, uh, you can see there's a lot of rust, so we'll get that cleaned up with some scotch bright. There's the bearing seat there, uh, and the circlet there. So a little bit marked up. We'll um, polish and clean that up. Uh, have it nice and clean and stripped from here backwards, and then we'll slowly install all the components. So starting with the new one of those, a little shield sits up against there. Then we have the outer, uh, the inboard, sorry, um, bearing uh, sleeve which sits. Where does this go? Oh, I think it must be a different design to use that. Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> we'll scratch that. So that'll go up to there and as we saw the um, bearing seat will come and press up to here. Yep. And then we have the circlip, which Hardy Spice has a new circlip. And then the outboard shield, sit like that. Right, that's what it looked like before, rusty. And after a quick scotch bright, looking decent. I must admit, Ben, you're pretty good at polishing the old shaft, mate. You know what the trick is, the secret? Lube. Spray lube. and seated. Step one complete. So the next step is to put the bearing up on this journal. So clean up that, make sure that seat's nice and clean. And we want to press the bearing on the right way, which is this way. Yeah, so tear it off, is it? Yeah. So you can see how there's a small ring, guys, and then flip over, and the big, bigger ring. So a small ring down into this. It's pretty, pretty evident once you're actually looking at it. But. So as previously seen in episodes, a bit of fag mounting paste. Ben's favorite. Good shit. And in the absence of the mounting sleeves, So make sure you do hit that inner inner ring, not the actual side of the cage. It's slow and steady, working each side, keeping it nice and true. Or if you're really clever, you could probably find a bit of tube. I think it's 30 mil ID. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is actually use that as a space. Like, it'll be easier. We don't have to be so careful. So pro tip: put a little nick in it, right? Or we'll actually get a cut right through it. So I used the old inner ring we had and I've just sliced a, a slot out of it so it allows it to expand a little bit and it's not going to grab down on that bearing seat where it used to be where it was a tight fit. Yeah. And then obviously deburr the inside so it doesn't mar up your shaft. Let's try to do this. Oh my god. That looks like she's home. There's a circlip groove. So if you look carefully at your circlips, you'll see that they're stamped from a piece of steel. And they'll normally have a rounded edge and a squared off bit of edge. So there's a squared edge and that one's a bit rounded. So I'll put the square edge a bit along the back there. Uh, it's like an OCD thing I do, I don't know why. <laughs> so the other trick is you don't really want to expand your circlip any more than you need to to get the job done. Because it'll start losing its spring. There we go. Smooth okay. as silk. But we're not done yet. So what you have to do is when you put a circlip in, most of the time it looks like it's home. The way you check is you can just, should be able to push it around just the slightest bit like that. And then you know it's definitely seated in the groove. And also that um, the circlip is tight enough. So if you, this is a new one, but if you're reusing it and you've overstretched it, 
if it's really hard to push it around in the groove like that, um, then it's been overstretched and you need to play around with it a bit. And this one goes over the top, so it goes this way, so that this cup and this forms a bit of a labyrinth seal. Over there, like that. Now they don't actually tell you um, where it stopped, and there's no stop there, so, but I would just imagine that it goes until um, just past the uh, just past the uh, step there. Yeah. Hopefully they've toleranced it so that this can sit in there and then you've got a controlled gap. But if you tap it down too far and it starts rubbing, then you can have issues to get it back. Um, so, hopefully that's right. So, it's okay, so we'll tap that down a little bit. Two hammers or one? Let's oh, not get carried away. Just one hammer kind of just job? Just one hammer, mate. Alright guys, so now that the old uni is pressed out, it's just a matter of like always, a bit of scotch bright, just cleaning out these bores for the caps to sit in. Same on the companion flange. So we are ready to put the new uni back in. Is that right? Yeah, we ready? I guess so. Alright, cool. Born ready. Uh, do we have the new uni? Ah, oh, that would probably help. BRB. As always, a bit of mounting paste. What's another word for this mounting paste, man? Anti-fretting paste. Anti-fretting paste. Just helps everything slide together. Could you use this any any grease? Yeah, look, you could use um, grease if you if that's what you had. You could use anti seize. Sweat. Uh, <laughs> sweat. You're probably better off actually using um, a little bit of grease rather than um, anti seize. Uh, because in some cases you want the bearings actually to seat in a particular spot. So the main reason I'm doing this is so that it doesn't pick up on the way in. Um, so yeah, just your normal general purpose grease or even just a little light coat of oil. Um, yeah. Probably just put a little bit of oil on there, a little bit of engine oil, whatever you've got lying around, and then it'll help you when you assemble it. So you can see on here, there is a seal there. And um, you need to remember to be really careful when you take it out and that okay, so you don't dislodge the rollers you can see there's quite a bit of suction in there there you go so that grease there will hold the rollers in so you really want to be very very careful when you handle it you know, to make sure that none of that gets dislodged yes because Ben does have a good funny upsetting but a good lesson anyway story about bearings and uni cups so when chaos chris was uh rebuilding the uni joints his brother in um in his land rover what happened was one of these rollers uh, needle rollers became dislodged and ended up lying across the bottom of the um, cup so then he went proceeded to fit the bearing and was pressing at the last little bit and was using a pressing tool so supporting around the outside and nothing across the inside when he heard an almighty crack and what happened was that stray roller had positioned itself across the end of the cross shaft and fractured the end of the brand new uh, needle roller so given that it was some um, ungodly late time of the night and you needed the car next day we cleaned up the best of the old ones that we could find re-greased it and put it back together so be really, really careful you don't dislodge any of those needle rollers uh, when you're assembling it. Alright guys, so we were midway through doing the, the new uni and we discovered that, well, we think that this side of the yoke, I guess, was bent. I think that's bent. See there? The yoke? Yeah, this, this piece here I think is bent. Yeah, I reckon it is too. Did it last, has bent it or Maybe it was bent from the factory. We could see some um, peen marks. Someone's been hitting it with a hammer. So we did exactly that and actually fixed it. So do you want to reenact what we what we did, Ben, in case this does happen to you? Right. So you need a token left-hander. That's me. You have one hammer here as a dolly, and then another hammer here. And then about 10 hits later? <laughs> 10 hits later, she's straight. There are a couple of risks that you have to lay out. One is that you deform this, the yoke, 
and two is that you can brunel the bearings inside the pinion. That if you did brunel the bearings in the pinion, it should be pretty obvious it'll be rumbly as soon as you turn around. Yep. Uh, these ones feel good. What a shock. And also definitely made it to the, the yeah, diff flange, otherwise you can easily bend that flange and then that's a whole nother can of worms, which you do not want on a Sunday afternoon, the day before Christmas. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to putting that uni in again, hopefully for the last time. So after fixing that bent uni, we can finally put the new uni in. So this is a very important thing, so be sure to read the instructions. First steps first, when you're getting yourself revved up and excited for the job, sit down, go through the service manual, read the box and all the parts, have a look at it, and imagine just how exciting your day will be. Now we can live it. And on the instructions it says, this universal joint only has sufficient grease to protect it during storage, which uh, that's how they look when they come. A couple of things these uni joints are sealed for life so they don't have the grease port through here where you can lubricate the um, the bearings in service like four drives and older cars have um, so you need to make sure you pack them with grease so ensure the reservoir in the cross which is that little hole there is filled with grease and that each bearing cap is half full so that's the reservoir in there oh and the other thing is the type of grease to use so in the faint writing down here, it says for best results, we recommend a lithium based EP2 grease. Do not use graphite based grease. Shaft should be rebalanced after assembly. So the first point, lithium based EP2. So lithium as the, um, as the soap base. So lithium or lithium complex or lithium 12 hydroxysterate, whichever one of those, as long as it's lithium based, because that's really important because the grease that they used uh, in there would probably be lithium based. So if you use a grease like um, HTB, which is um, bentonite clay and so on, or some sort of clay, uh, it won't be miscible with the grease that's there and you can cause a compatibility issue and the grease won't do its job. So make sure it's a lithium based grease. The second point about um, graphite based greases, that also applies that to molly and things like that. So don't use any of those type of greases. So we have our EP2 means NLGI2 uh, stiffness with um, consistency number two and extreme pressure additive. That's what this grease is. So we're just gonna pack it in. You have to be really careful to squeeze it all the way in and allow the air to come out because uh, you can trap air at the bottom and you don't have any grease. So we filled the, um, filled the reservoir in the end and we're gonna do both the ends. I'm going to fit it into this particular joint. So be sure to check your rollers. Yes. See, rollers are all in, half filled with grease. And when we first get it in there, get it nice and seated. Then we'll put the... It's okay, we'll reseat that seal, but it's pushed it out with the grease. So just lightly push it in until the circlip groove appears. Yeah, there. Oh, there it is. Try not to drop your tooling all over the place. Oh, I don't know about that half packed thing. Well, it kind of like hydraulic it out, is it? Yeah, it just end up pushing it all out and all over the place. And it's really difficult to get that seated now. So that seal, see how the seal's seated now? Yeah. So it's just pushed it all in. I don't know that that's a good idea. You'd certainly put it in there. So after that first one, it seemed like a bit too much grease. So. Yeah, it's all just oozing out everywhere, so we'll just put in just enough. Because um, I think some have a little space at the end, which is a reservoir. This one doesn't appear to. So it was just once you couldn't, you, once it was on, you couldn't get it all the way in because it was hydraulicing itself back out. So 
check to make sure your needles are seated. And then as you put it in, just give it a twist as you feed it in. Okay. And then same deal as before. Press her in. Bearings pressed in and we're just gonna slide the clip home. And on the other side. Check that that. Yeah. Press that in a bit yeah. more. That seems very tight. Yeah, and that groove is fully exposed, I don't think. Hmm. So I said, really, really strange. We just, as you just saw, we had a, I don't know, it was just wasn't showing the full bore for that to. Full width. Well, the full, full width of that um, channel, I guess, to put the circlip in. So we checked it with the old one, um, same part numbers, everything. So we ended up just doing it right up and then kind of putting a screwdriver in it to lever it slightly open so Ben could just tap it in and get it started. Um, both the circlips are in now. It's very tight, um, but the other one was the exact same dimensions and it came out of there, so... I guess they just loosen up with a bit of hellies. Well, I guess you know the run-in procedure now. Yeah. Okay. All so right. we'll just clean up some of the grease and we'll make a mess and move on to the next side. Alright, so next step, mating it to the shaft. Checking. Yes. We'll get that started just by twisting it. Okay, then we'll turn that around. Oh, headbutt of the camera. Weird, I say, like once it gets started, it just. Yeah. So it must go in just a tiny bit on an angle or something. Superb. Pop the circuit in. Okay. And see that rubber seal, make sure that's seated. Right. Okay. Up like that. All the needles are okay. Guys, this is the exact same as the other one, so I'm going to put the camera down and give Ben a hand to do this. How come the screen's off? Uh, turn the camera on? No. <laughs> that was a reenactment, but anyway. Um, so, so yeah, uni's done. Now that it, as we said, it felt really, really fucking tight pressing those in to get enough room for the, um, the rebate for the, um, Circlip. So clip, you know, that's it. Um, so yeah, that's now that it's in, that's it's not too tight. And it's um, just right I think. Not too tight, just right. Your expert handling of the end of the shaft. Yeah. So yeah, the way to loosen up is everything kind of. Well, you're gonna have in, one so. tight drive train. Yeah. So C V time. Okay, so after the rings, it's time for the boot, so that's a bit of the uh, L80 in there just to help it slip on. We need the hose clamp. So, we're going to have to be intelligent for just a minute here. That's the front, it turns clockwise as we're looking down it. We want the tail, should it come loose, to be just kind of like being folded back. Yes. So it should go that way. Who the hell would think of that? Got to prepare this for guy. the. Got to prepare for the worst with this uh, little project here. <laughs> a little project. We thought drive shaft easy, you know, just one arvo. Where's that little screwdriver? <laughs> Where is that little screwdriver? Heard that too many times today. We need, too we need many belt, times. You know what we need? BBG. Ben, 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 Ben. BBG tool holsters. 
Yes. And strap them on, just holster your screwdriver. Man, it's back at the other workstation. Oh, jeez Louise. <clears throat> I'm sure I remember you tugging this little bit over with the yeah. needle nose last time. Not going in. I'll try to twist it, hopefully it'll kind of work on like a, a bike yeah. chain or something. So this is the next challenge, guys. Okay, so if you get in under the lip, lift it up, and then on the top just push down on the rubber, you'll get it to seat on over. There we go. Nicely seated. So avalanche. Two steps here. We're going to put RTV sealant around this flange here so that it seals to the bearing, which is this part here. And then we're going to put some of the molly grease on the splines to help prevent uh, wear okay. between here and there. So are we packing this bearing first or are we going to pack it once it's attached to this? No, I'll pack it first so we can work it and get it yeah. get to both sides. So if you want to put the RTV down here, I'll pack this. Yep. And we're away. ET hour I'm packing because I'm worried this will set before. Or you that fast. Oh, I will. I'll pack it first then. Good thinking. Do you want some gloves? If you've got a clean pair. I've got only a hundred pair. Alright guys, you're gonna to wanna to scrub up for this. Do the nice slap. Yes. Okay, here we go. This one's for the viewers. Get your fingers started. Pull them on. Oh! <laughs> so, here's our um, CV joint. Make sure, make sure it's nice and clean in there. This black finish looks like some sort of phosphating. Uh, and there is, a, there is actually a direction for this groove. So, uh, judging by the old one, the groove goes up. Yep. Uh, just check on the so don't actually mention where that groove goes, but it looks symmetric, so... We copy this one. Go that one. That one. Yeah. So the groove, the groove is opposite is the boot, so it goes that way. Anyway, so groove at the top. So we're going to grease the bearing, so what we want to do is not disassemble it. Oops. Put it together. There we go. So, this black finish is some sort of phosphating which helps with the um, initial run in. We're going to get our nicely fitted nitrile gloves, and you'll have to do something about these gloves that I showed you. So, we get the grease, we want to push it into all the races, all the cavities, everywhere inside the bearing. Really work it in. Try not to get too much inside those holes. So I guess when you're choosing the grease, you want to get the highest percentage of molly? Yeah, so typically um, most consumer automotive grade um, greases with molly in them are 3% molly. You can get them with 5%, so that's something to look out for. I think um, valve, in terms of the consumer line greases, Valvoline Valveplex M is 5% molly, uh, which is good. Second thing to look at is what the consistency is or the NLGI rating. So again, most of the off-the-shelf greases you find in auto parts stores and so on, like this one will be NLGI 2, which is consistency 2, uh, which is perfectly adequate for this type of application and um, happily use it. The grease we're using here is Castrol Spherol LMM. Uh, which is their molly grease, it's 3% molly from memory, um, NLGI2. Base viscosity is 200-ish Sanostokes uh, with a lithium thickener. That's pretty acceptable, it's pretty common on the range um, grease. If I was ordering the greases for tail shafts and uh, CV joints and so on, I'd probably go with a um, industrial grease like um, Penrite Ind, Ind grease. Uh, HT Molly HT, which is to an uh, which is a thicker base viscosity, around about 400 centistokes. 
and is NLGI 1.5 which means that it's a bit softer and it's easier to get into all these uh, little crevices but that's sort of a special order industrial grease whereas this is pretty readily off the shelf and it'll do the job but my preference if you're going to go with off the shelf um, consumer sort of automotive greases then uh, Valplex M which has a high concentration of molly yep. the Castrol Spherol LMM which is 3% so previously I think it was just called LMM, but yeah, you've got two LMM and LMX. LMX is now called Premium Heavy Duty. And LMFAO and <laughs> LMAO. And Ruffle. <laughs> Here's a dad joke for you. What's a Ruffle Copter? When a joke is so funny that it takes off. Uh, Until it's getting late, we haven't had dinner. <laughs> Yeah, about due for that. It seems to be a common occurrence. There's always some stupid thing that holds us up. Well, it's kind of messy jobs. It's good to have plenty of rags at hand. Rags and gloves. Can't have enough of them. I'll put some grease in these splines in here. And I'll do some RTV. See you in a... Alright. There we go. And put so Ben has mollied up the other end of the shaft as well, or the, the male end of the the anatomy. The assembly. Anatomy. <laughs> That's home. So we got an assortment of circlip, didn't we? We did Different indeed. thickness. So there was three, diameter. three circlips, two were the, the same thickness at 23 and one was bigger than that and then we have two thicknesses of uh, snap rings so this one there is way too small so it must be this one that's the ticket these don't quite go wide enough now that looks to me like one example where the circlip's not fully no, seated definitely not so what we'll do is grab our hammer. small screwdriver <laughs> where's that screwdriver So you can see this side is fully seated, the difference between unseated and seated. So that is definitely fully seated. Ready for it? Just give it the old work around. Work around or reach around? No way. Let's uh, keep our mind on the job, eh? Yeah, it is. <laughs> So what do you think of that? Just work that in. Are you right? We're all grown up. You're gonna have to change the rating on your show. It's free for all. Self-regulation, the best That's kind. It. Okay, so <clears throat> you probably noticed that we didn't pack the um, boot at the bottom with grease. With grease. Uh, the reason for that is we want to leave some room for um, the grease that will get expelled to go so that it doesn't all jam up in the joint and um, cause extra friction and heat. And I'll just push that in. Work it through. Alright, so same thing again, RTV on this mating flange. Uh, ben has just wire brushed these bolts and he's put a, a dab of, what is it, mid strength? 243. Personal favourite of mine. So remember before the indexing marks that we put on the shaft. So just a matter of lining those back up. So what is the point of those plates? Is that like a locking plate or is it? Uh, it's like a washer. Okay. That's just a press steel sort of. So it's kind of just killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, I think um, it'd probably be pretty hard Actually, to Actually, I suppose it, it distributes the, the, load, the, the load across well. it, yeah. So just work your way around, get them, you know, about five Newton thumbs, and then we'll go through with the torque wrench. And of course, the magic blue marker when they're all torqued. So guys, the bolts are torqued to 40 Newton metres. Now Ben is just assembling this last clamp. We are aware of the existence of the proper tool for this. However, that is not present. I thought you're doing a decent job, mate. They could have supplied us a smaller clamp. Yeah, if you ask me. 
clamp is massive. I'm gonna have to take a few layers off it. It's just way too big. And then the finished job. Pretty good, man. That actually looks pretty neat. Oh yeah. How's the uh, slop or lack of slop feel? Nothing. Oh no, it's at this end now. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Not too bad. It, it is there, but I reckon she'll do for a little while. Yeah. Maybe next time I have it out with the next clutch. Yeah. If I'm feeling adventurous, I'll do it. That, is that nice. one's beautiful. Um, there we go. Alright. So I guess we're just going to put this bracket back on the center bearing and we can put it back in the vehicle. And for those you wondering, these magnets on here, these are for my aftermarket speedo because my G-Force T5 has a different Mustang pickup account. point. Yeah. yeah, because it was for a Mustang, it doesn't have the speedo sensor that the Commodore speedo drive runs off. So that's why. It's actually a auto meter universal speedometer kit. It works really well. It's just a whole effect sender. Well guys, it's all back in, no dramas. Put some new cone locks on, as I mentioned before. The only bit that seems to clunk now is the front uni, which we didn't do tonight. We'll see how it goes. Worst case, we'll pull it back out at some stage and... Well, you have the parts on it. Yeah. All right, let's go for a drive, get some pizza, pasta, and think of the next thing we can spend. Copious amounts of time on. All right, thank you, Benny. Till next time, guys. I feel the